this is me today, college dropout, gaps, didn't have anyone to vouch for, but I never gave up on myself and someone took a chance on me, so that's my story. All right, everyone, welcome back to the Ramped Podcast. Today we have a very special guest with us. It is Linda Lee. Linda, how are you? I'm good. Nice to see you again, Danny. Of course, of course. Nice to see you too. We've been in each other's orbit for some time. We're huge, huge fans of yours, and you obviously have done so much tremendous work for job seekers. So I'm pumped to dive into today's discussion and unpack some things for job seekers. Before we jump into all of those meaty topics, who is Linda Lee? Well, I am a mental health advocate first and foremost. So I grew up in a first generation immigrant family. My parents came here from like Vietnam and they immigrated in their like 30s. And obviously like the path was go to school like forever (laughs) and then go to college, graduate, get a job and then retire. But I did not go to college. I dropped out and I was it was so shameful in my family. Like, how could you do this? Like, how could you drop out of college when we sacrificed everything for you here? And they're like, okay, what are you going to do with your life? And I'm like, I'm going to be a nanny. So I was a nanny for like three to five years and I was settling for like $15 an hour and I was just barely getting by and I was wait, I was seeing like all of my like peers and classmates like go on and do big things. And then one day like COVID hit and I lost all of my nannying jobs because everyone was forced to stay home with their kids and I was unemployed. And then I started applying. I was like, okay, it's time to get into corporate. And no one wanted to hire me because I had no experience except being a nanny. I had no degree. Like I had no references. I had no connections. Like I was literally a nobody. Like no one knew who I was. And after like applying like a hundred times, I kept getting like scams and rejections and saying like, sorry, we can't hire someone because we don't have any merit for you. And so what I did was the unorthodox. Like I got dressed up in like a nice dress. I printed out dozens of my resumes. And then I went to like every single company that I could find within like a 30 mile distance. I went in, I was just like, may I please speak with the hiring manager? And I spoke with the hiring manager at like some banks and I told them, I'm like, you can look at my resume. You're not going to be able to see anything that's going to make you hire me on here. But if you're willing to give me the chance, I'm going to be the hardest worker you're going to meet because how many people do you know that's going to walk in here, ask for you to shake your hand, introduce themselves to you and ask for a chance. And because I did that, they called the recruiter. I got an interview the same week. I got the offer for a banking job the next day. And then that's how I got into like my corporate career and I got into recruiting same way. I used, I utilized LinkedIn. I went on, I networked. I interviewed five times for this same company. Every hiring manager said, no, sorry, you have gaps. You quit your job early. You're just a nanny. You have no college degree. We cannot trust you. And then one hiring manager said, look, how many times have you been rejected? I'm like, this will be my fifth time if you say no. And she said, I want to hear your story. I don't want to know about your degree. I don't care about your job. I don't care about your tenure. I want to know who Linda is. And I sold her on my work ethic. She gave me the offer on the spot, became top performer that year, made tons of bonuses, got promoted. Then I grew LinkedIn to five, almost 500,000 within one year. And I was able to transition to like my recruiting job now in defense by utilizing LinkedIn, by growing. So this is me today college dropout, gaps, didn't have anyone to vouch for, but I never gave up on myself and someone took a chance on me because of it. So that's my story. Man, what what a story. What a story. So much to unpack there. I want to go into so many parts of this. I will just say congratulations. Like This is so cool. I think our audience will love listening to even just that part because So many people through this job search lose faith in themselves. We've heard that over and over again. And it sounds like from the jump, what you did is bet on yourself over and over again. I'm sure, I'm sure with your family, it was a crazy, crazy mental, emotional hurdle to get through when you told them that you were going to drop out of college to bet on yourself to be a nanny. And then during COVID, the world just was turned upside down. You effectively bet on yourself again and walked into businesses, which no one does anymore. The last time I saw somebody do that was probably 10 years ago where I was working and just so many cool things to take away. The question I have is 
how did you do it? How did you go and just commit to betting on yourself, one, and then two, doing whatever it took to get the job that you wanted? Yes. Um, it's not easy on paper as I make it out to be. There is a lot of self-doubt. I honestly wanted to give up every single day. And my self-esteem was like bottom of the barrel because like you can saying no to a candidate is one thing. But these hiring managers that were saying no to me, like they had to like degrade me and nitpick me and point out everything that I wasn't capable of. Was. And for me as like a recruiter now, like I look back and I'm so thankful I didn't give up because if I had, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be the woman that I am. And for me, like it was a very big deal in my family, like for me not to go to college. But I realized that like I am going to follow the traditional path that society and my family wants for me. And I'm going to be miserable the rest of my life. And for me to go through all those rejections to get the redirection that I am, that I'm in today, it was worth it because I followed the unconventional path and it led me to the life that I wanted to lead for myself. And I did that by taking every single no and turning it into my one yes. I admire that so much. I think there's so much to learn from willpower and perseverance and not accepting no when you know there's something better out there for you. And it's so true with the job search, and maybe this is a good transition point, though I admit want to spend much more time on your journey and your story. Today's job search has gotten so difficult. We are seeing layoffs continue to go, and this is you know almost a year into the first big wave of layoffs now. What can folks do at a high level to prime themselves for what is going to be a job search that may take longer than they want or expected if they have just been unseated or they're going through this transition in their career? Yes, most definitely. What I learned was like when I quit my banking job, I was unemployed for like almost like six to seven months. And that was like constantly applying every single day. Like you can do that 10 years ago, you could apply and you'll probably get like an interview the next day. But today, like you're battling against like hundreds of thousands of applicants who are either more qualified than you, similarly qualified, or they have a referral. What I would really recommend for candidates to stand out is really utilize LinkedIn and using different platforms to apply. Obviously, like I tell like all of the people that I work with personally one on one is really brand yourself on LinkedIn, because if no one knows who you are and they're just looking at your resume, it's really hard for you to stand out. Like, for example, if we're applying to college applications and everyone has a 4.0 GPA, everyone does the same sports, everyone is like part of the same debate team, everyone like is the same race or ethnicity or whatever it is, how are you going to stand out? So for me, the midst of layoffs last year when I was um, transitioning from my former recruiting job, I landed four offers when people were getting laid off and I didn't apply at all. What I did was I went on LinkedIn, I wrote every single day and I searched for directors or directors of talent acquisition and I sent them a, an, a message. Like people think like you should reach out to recruiters and network with recruiters. That's okay. But they're just going to go to their boss, which is either the hiring manager or it's the director of talent acquisition. So if you're able to like really network with executives during your role, why the, whether you're like looking for tech or cybersecurity or manufacturing, networking with people within those communities and branding yourself because your LinkedIn is your personal portfolio. Like that's one way for you to stand out. Amazing, amazing advice. And we often give the same advice on LinkedIn, like develop your personal brand, make sure that you're out there, make sure you're networking and communicating. I'm curious to know, because I know our audience is going to absolutely eat this stuff up, is what I'm most curious about is, okay, so I look at someone like you on LinkedIn and that profile is exceptional, right? You're posting all the time. You have so many followers, you have so many fans there. For somebody who's just getting started, maybe has 100 or 200 connections, What's the first step? How can they just get into the LinkedIn game or into posting on LinkedIn or developing that brand when somebody even like me looks at you and you're like, oh man, that's just such a hurdle to climb. I'm never going to get there. Those, that follower count, that distribution, you know, developing my personal brand is so far away from that. So how do you get started? Yes. So it's really funny because August 2021, I started writing content and I was at like maybe two, 300 connections or followers. 
And for me, I just decided like, it wasn't to be a content creator. That was not the end goal. If for me, it was, I'm going to set myself up. So if I ever get laid off, if I ever need to quit a toxic job, somebody is going to help me because they're in my network because I built such a substantial community that I'm always going to be able to like find a job or find a lead or someone will take a chance on me. And over time, what I learned is like, you just have to start. And you don't need a direction on where you want to post because I think when you feel like you need a direction, people get so scared and shriveled and crippled that they just can't bring themselves to write. If you look back at some of my like old posts, I would get like one to two likes and maybe like a hundred engagement, like for three to four to five months straight. And here's the difference. I was excited. I was like, okay, so today I impacted two people. Today I got 10 people to like me. And then eventually like I learned what makes my brand Linda. And the more I wrote and practiced and rehearsed and studied the different like strategies, like what was going viral that day? What was the trending topic that day? That's how I started to build this massive community where I learned like, okay, so this works for me. This doesn't, it's all trial and error. And it's like, no one is going to make fun of you for starting. Like someone with like a hundred thousand or 1 million followers is not going to make fun of you because you're choosing to start. They're going to make fun of you <laughs> because you're choosing to sit back and do that <laughs> and do nothing. Failure is not not trying. Failure is sitting and doing nothing. Like if you try, you're already successful. Such good advice. Such good advice. It's really just take the first step, assess where you are, go from there. And I think you've pretty much done that. I mean, your your results are obviously incredible, especially on your profile and the community that you've built is really exceptional. If you're all right with it, I'd love to go kind of quick hitting on some LinkedIn things because we get so many questions from our audience about LinkedIn. So if you're open to it, I'd love to just lob some quick hitters at you. Yeah, of course. All right. Awesome. So tell me the one thing that folks miss on their LinkedIn profiles that they should absolutely be doing right now. The things that they're missing on their profiles is really is their skill sets on their jobs and curating it in a way where it will allow like recruiters to reach out to you. For example, if you're applying to be a recruiter and your profile is absolutely blank with all your skills, like recruiters who are using LinkedIn Recruiter or the ATS, they're searching for a specific highlighted specification because you're competing when they generate their searches, like you're going to be one out of thousands of people that are popping up. So if you're like, for example, like, let's say you want to apply to be a recruiter for Google or Amazon or Facebook, I would recommend like looking at their job descriptions, utilizing like ChatGTP, like matching their job description to your resume and skill sets and adding that onto your profile and your call to action on your like headline should be very clear. Like, what is it that you do that makes your profile stand out? Like, what do you recruit for? What are your top skill sets? What are your accomplishments? When I like do like reviews on LinkedIn, like for people, they're missing so many things. Like, and the about section is, I feel it's so important because people like when they look at my profile, they always compliment my about section because it's just like, who is this person? Like, I have no idea who they are. All they put in their job section is, oh, I recruit for tech. I'm like, but I want to know who you are. Like, what makes you stand out? Like, what are your hobbies? What do you love to do on the weekends? Are you all about work? What are your accomplishments? What are your skills? Like, really take the time to like, if you care so much about your resume, your LinkedIn should be your resume. Like, this is like the, this is 2023 and LinkedIn is becoming the new resume. Like, a piece of paper is not going to cut it anymore. Absolutely. Such good advice. Some of the things that we share too, I actually didn't know about the skills in each section too, how important those could be for searching and how important they could be for recruiters who will organically find your profile. Okay. One more thing. What is something that folks are doing with their LinkedIn profiles right now that they need to scrap immediately? Scrap immediately. I really do think that your profile picture does speak a thousand words. I know like when I started on LinkedIn, like I had the smallest profile picture or I wouldn't even exist on LinkedIn and people would think like I was a bot. So I really would suggest like having like a professional headshot, like using like even like sector AI or Remini. If you can't afford like $600 of a, a photographer, there are options out there for you to be able to brand yourself professionally. And honestly, like have your open to work open like like have it on like it's not embarrassing to do that like I had it on for almost eight months 
And that's how I got so many reach outs. It's just like, don't be ashamed to be open to work. There's nothing wrong with you. Like, and if you're not doing that, like you're really making a big mistake. 100% agree. So true. The way your profile on LinkedIn looks like it is a little bit about just a little extra polish. And part of that is having a profile picture that is clear, high quality, forward looking, not gimmicky, doesn't not exist. So is there like all this stuff is so important. Okay. A few more for LinkedIn. Tell me one thing, one tactic you have seen for reaching out to recruiters or hiring managers that has worked really well for your job seeking community. For my job seeking community. So what I've seen, like for me specifically is do not send super long messages because I don't read them. Um, Cause it's just like the saying is very true. Like if you're getting like a thousand applicants, you're only really going to have like 30 seconds to a minute to really look at a resume at times. So I would really make sure like it's consistent and to the point. Like when I sent like my template to hiring managers and like directors to take a chance on me, I would say like, hi, my name is Linda. Um, I'm specialized in X, Y, and Z. These are my skill sets. I'm currently looking for a new job because like this role is no longer a fit for me and I want to explore new options. I wanted to reach out to see if your company is currently hiring or if you had anything for me. Thank you so much and have a great day. Believe it or not, it was super short to the point, three sentences. I got like 10 to 15 responses from that because they're like, thank you for keeping it short and simple. Thank you for attaching your resume. Like, thank you for knowing who to reach out to because I get so many people that reach out to me. They don't ask me what I recruit for. They're just like, hey, this is my resume. Can you get me a job? And I'm like, no, I'm not going to get you a job because I honestly have no idea like what a scribe master is. Like, I don't even know what that is myself. Or another thing that I really see as well is like when people use my network to get to me, they'll send my connections or my friends messages. And they're just like, this is my resume. Can you get Linda to like, reply and it's like you don't understand that's very like unprofessional and it really comes off some kind of way so recommend like to really learn common courtesy to really know how to ask the right questions and just to keep it straight and to the point there's no need to like overdo it at times so so true such good advice i love the impact that you can have on linkedin messenger with folks but there is some decency and courtesy that you need to Implore as well. So I think a lot of takeaways there. What I found, and you tell me how you how you think about this, is when I find the messenger most impactful is when somebody treats it like a messenger. It's not this email back and forth, long page, long form messages. It's really quick, and it's somebody that actually took the time to look me up or look something up or find something that I could be interested in and write a super custom, but really tactful and short message that I can just consume on my phone. Not, oh, this like pitch slap of, hey, I would love to connect with you. And then comes the three to four paragraph sales pitch based on something I'm just totally not interested in. It's really somebody who just, it's not even that much work, right? Take three minutes to look up my profile. Take, take a minute and a half to look at some of the things that I've done and just think like, do I actually care about this? It's really like not that big of a test. Yeah, I completely agree with you on that, Danny, because like I do a lot of like sponsorships and brands and I do a lot of outbounds. The feedback that I've gotten from like partnerships that wanted to work with me was they said, man, you just really kept it to the point. You actually know what you're talking about. You actually looked us up and know our like our impact, our message, our call to action. And it didn't feel like salesy at all. And it's like, we wanted to book with you because it's just like, man, it's just not like a sales, like, hey, she only connected with me to do this and everything sounds the same. It's like, she took the time to generate a custom response that tailored to our company needs. And it should be the same for job seekers, like tailor it to that person. Even if it's just looking up their about, it's like, hey, they like dogs. It's just like, oh my gosh, I have a dog too. You know, something that will make you like, connect and resonate well, because we're all humans at the end of the day. And we all crave human interaction, be able to like relate to each other. Yeah, it's really important. I find that it's really like a two step process for me. When I'm interacting with somebody on LinkedIn, I want to one add value to their life. And I heard this somewhere else, but it's the show me, you know, me principle, right? Like just 
just show me that you did a little bit of research or show me that you took the time to actually understand who I am. I, I love these advice, Linda. I think it's really important. And for somebody who's, who's so prolific at LinkedIn like you, I think our audience is going to eat this stuff up because again, like there's so much to be uncovered. I have a question for you moving off the quick hitters into more high level concepts on LinkedIn. One, has LinkedIn replaced the resume? I got flamed a little bit on one of my posts for saying it has. And then two, if it has not, when is it going to replace the resume entirely? I feel like that is like a super subjective topic. And it's like one thing people have to understand is just like, when if you're going to read like posts on social media, if you don't agree with what someone says, just keep scrolling because it's like to each their own. You know, I do say things too and people go off on me and like, I'm not wrong. You're not right. It's neutral. Like, but in that kind of sense, I've never gotten like an interview because I just applied. I've gotten interviews because I've networked and it's just like, like for my current job, like how I got it was like, I cold messaged the director of like talent acquisition and she just found my message like so heartwarming and like she sent it to like the team and I don't even think like she even looked at my resume, like to be honest. I did have the qualifications, of course, and I matched the skill sets, but it was really like my network and my brand and my profile. It's like it spoke for itself. And I honestly feel like LinkedIn has taken over like a lot of the resumes. Obviously, like if you do really well, like by networking, people are going to give you the link I've seen and there's like, hey, can you go apply for this role? And then that's how you stand out. I think it really starts with like them seeing your value on LinkedIn, like, because that's how you stand out from being like an applicant. And then when you apply, it's just like, hey, this is who to look out for. Because honestly, even like as a recruiter, I get like hundreds of applicants just for one rec. And it's like, typically it's like a referral or it's like, this is someone who stood out, has done cold reach. And it's just like, I know who to look for. So I really do feel like it's kind of taking over slowly but surely probably within the next two years it's going to be like an automatic thing nice okay i love it and i agree i agree completely i think it has taken over i feel like every time i speak with somebody in talent acquisition or even a hiring manager they are not saying oh i relied on their resume entirely they're saying like oh i looked them up on linkedin to just make sure they're legit make sure they you know they exist and then I, I checked out their resume so it's either it's either one and two or kind of just one most definitely <laughs> Cool. Well, one last question before the final question for you on LinkedIn. And I know we spent so much time on this, but there's just so much that I want to learn and so much our audience wants to learn. Tell me a funny or fun story about how you connected with somebody on LinkedIn who is now a true real life connection of yours. Oh my gosh. This is so funny. Actually, one of my best friends is from LinkedIn. I kind of ghosted her, to be honest, when I first met her. Like, she reached out. <laughs> like she, I just hit 100K and I was going through like a best friend breakup and we had exchanged numbers. She's like, let's collab. And then after that, I changed my number and I didn't get back to her. And then eventually, oh, I don't no. know, like what happened. Yeah. And then eventually, like, I was just like, okay, maybe you should be open because she could be really cool. And then I gave her my new number. And then we bonded and then we started talking every single day. There hasn't been a day that has gone by within the year that we have not spoken. I met her in real life. She's also a content creator and she's phenomenal. So yeah, like I've honestly met some really tremendous people on LinkedIn. Some of my best friends are honestly from LinkedIn. Like I don't even talk to like some of my real friends anymore. Like all of my friends are just like, hey, how you met them? Like LinkedIn, even my roommate is from LinkedIn. Like I met them off of LinkedIn. Amazing. Um, so it's just like, yeah, like I met my roommate and mess met my best friends. I'm probably gonna meet my future husband off of LinkedIn, like at this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love it. I love it. LinkedIn LinkedIn dating section will probably exist sometime soon. It's like the the Tinder on LinkedIn or something like that. <laughs> Well, really cool. I, I, I love the stories and it's so cool that you have met so many great friends of yours uh, on LinkedIn. I think it's such a powerful tool. All right. So Linda, the last question that we've asked all of our guests on all four seasons of the Rent podcast is now that you have the benefit of hindsight, what advice would you tell yourself as you are entering into your career? Now that I've had the mindset of where I'm at, I honestly, if I could tell like three years ago, Linda, like, 
the narrative that other hiring managers or people like shame you on or tell about yourself, you need to untell all of those things. If they tell you you're not worth it, if they tell you you can't succeed, if they shame you in any way, you should be grateful because that company is not for you. If they treat you like that in the hiring process, can you imagine what it's going to be like if they're your boss? Like if you need a sick day, if you're going through a hard time, they're not going to support you. You should be so grateful when someone shows you who they are in real time, believe it and take that as like a red flag and move on. That's like my biggest advice. And like the second thing too, is just like your resume does not define your worth. Your worth is inherent and nothing, like no job, no like hiring manager, no career can ever take away from it because you're always going to be qualifiable in anything that you do. You just need someone to give you a chance, but you need to give yourself a chance first to believe that I got this no matter the rejections, the no's, the hate, nothing. Like you are good enough as you are and someday someone is going to see that and they're going to take a chance on you and you're going to be worth it to them. So whoever says no to you, thank God. Incredible, incredible advice, Linda. Thank you so much for all that you've shared on this episode, all you've shared with us at Ramped in our community, and all you share on LinkedIn to your community as well. We're honored that you have been spending time with us and you continue to. And honestly, like your story is just so impressive and our audience is going to eat this up. So I have an idea where folks can find you, but why don't you tell folks where they can find you, where they can reach you and how you can connect with them? Uh, Yes. So I'm Linda Lee with one E and a sunflower on LinkedIn. You can find me there, but I'm also building and launching a mental health brand for Gen Z that's coming in three weeks. So I will have a newsletter and website and you can find me there um, as well. My goal is to help candidates and anyone struggling to be able to find their voice in this loud, disruptive space. It's like, you can be quiet, but you can amplify. Amazing. We will link to that. I think this episode will launch around the time the the service or the product is launching as well. So we will link to that in the show notes. Linda, thank you so, so much. And we hope to have you back sometime on the Ramp Podcast. Thank you so much, Danny. It was an absolute pleasure. (laughs) 